How's it going everyone? Today's video is going to be how we excavated and backfilled for this beautiful paver patio and concrete block pillars and sitting walls. Enjoy this video. Let's just get right into the day guys. Got the machine, some plywood down so we don't damage any asphalt. What do you think about it Benny? I have no idea yet. A lot of little things in this project, not a huge project but a lot of uh, parts of this project. And today is going to be removing the asphalt, excavating, and backfill. We're here, machines here. Thanks for videotaping, bud. Welcome. Shoulders are getting white. <laughs> These shirts from all the sweat, oh, yeah. they're starting to like bleach. Get all the like, funky colors. All right, we're going to set this up, guys. We got to paint it out, get our measurements and everything. So I always lay out my proposed excavation area with marking paint. I paint out the, the patio or walkway, whatever it may be on the ground or in this case on the asphalt that I'll be removing. I'm painting out the those sitting walls and the pillars and then everything inside will be the the patio. Now I'm using a chalk line to mark where we're going to saw cut the asphalt and it's going to be eight inches further than our wall. That accounts for the extra backfill material needed to prevent the wall from shifting and sinking in the future. All right this is the basic layout of our project here. We want the block inside from the edge of the excavation because the edge of the excavation is where um, things will sink and settle the most, where two different soil types meet straight up or even at a slope. That's where things are gonna shift the most. So you wanna, you wanna bring your excavation out further than where your build is gonna be. Okay, so just like any time I make cuts with this concrete cutoff saw, you score the line you're cutting and then you go back and cut all the way through. We had a hose set up from a neighbor's house because there was no outdoor um, water spigot at this house right now because they're doing a lot of remodeling. So Benny used his bottle of water to get me to where <laughs> the hose could reach us. So on this project, I rented a mini excavator because it's going to be the best machine for actually digging out the soil. I do realize having a skid steer or a mini skid steer on site would be very helpful to pull out this asphalt after I cut it. But having both pieces of equipment on site just wasn't feasible for this project. So I just got to suffer the, the slowness of removing the asphalt and I'll make up for it with the time saved when I'm digging out the soil.
is a full load right there. That's a full load. Yep, that's definitely a full load. Broke off on all the cuts pretty nice. Hey, bud. Hey. How are you? Good. That's good. Ben is out of here with the first load of asphalt. Drive safe, bud. All right, so he's gonna go dump that asphalt, pick up a load of three quarter inch clear crushed stone so that we can start backfilling as well. And while he's gone, I'm gonna pull the rest of that corner of asphalt out and then pull all the asphalt, all the little pieces, everything. We're gonna pull it all down over here. And then I'm gonna start excavating on this side and I'll leave a pile over here somewhere. That way when he comes back, I can um, load him with some asphalt. He can leave and then I can keep doing a little bit more excavation and backfilling. But it's going pretty smooth here, going pretty smooth. And the good thing is it's a nice, pretty nice gravel uh, soil underneath it. So uh, we'll have to do just our regular excavation, about eight to 10 inches down, leaving six inches for three quarter inch crushed stone, an inch for our uh, chip stone, our bedding material is what I mean. And then our two and a half inches or so for our paver. So if you're a new viewer and you want to know a little bit more about our base prep method using open grade base, make sure you check out my channel. I have a lot of how-to videos that goes into a little bit more detail on how we prep the base for pavers, how we screed pavers, how we lay them. There's a lot of content on my channel with that information, so be sure to check that out. died but Ben is back with some stone we're excavated probably about halfway maybe a little bit less than halfway Benny do you have anything to say to the viewers bro a lot of people out there that like you oh yeah well I'd like to say that uh you gotta, you gotta look at them when you're talking to them. I'm looking at what to talk about. <laughs> Rocks. Rocks. Any gold in those ones? Not in these ones. Jeez. This is the gray stone, not the blue. Only got luck with the blue. It's uh, all right. All right, man. I'm gonna put this thing on time lapse. Okay. So if you've been following along with the channel, you know what we're doing. But if you're a new viewer, 
what we're doing is we use open grade base, meaning we use this three quarter inch clean crushed stone with no fine particles in it. And we spread a thin layer of this stone, one to one and a half inches of it, over our subsoil when we get to the correct grade, and we compact it into our subsoil. That's going to help stiffen the base of our project, and it's also going to help the water permeate into the subsoil and help it to drain freely into the ground. It's important to cover the subsoil in three-quarter stone before you compact it because if you compact just the subsoil, what you're doing is you're closing the soil up tight and it makes it hard for water to penetrate and permeate. And that's just not what you want from a base under your pavers. You want water to travel through freely and permeate down into your subsoils. So when you compact this three-quarter inch stone into your soil, it opens it up, making it easier for it to accept water. And once we have this one to one and a half inch layer of stone compacted, it's nice and tight, gives us a solid base, and then we install this geotextile fabric on top of that. And on top of that, we're gonna backfill with our open grade base up to height, as long as it's six inches or less. This stone only needs to be compacted in six inch lifts. So if you're only going to be using six inches or left, less, you can just backfill right to your height, rake it to grade, and then compact it. That's a big plus to using this kind of stone. That's good, bud. Will you take for a while? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be gold right there. Stay gold, pony boy. Hey man, we got some fill here. Yep. Plenty of it. I wish this thing could zoom in. Uh, said, I wish this thing could zoom in. <laughs> I can zoom it in when I edit. <laughs> you can throw it on a time lapse, bud. You want. Alright, pal. So I've mentioned it in videos before, but if you're somebody who's getting into this trade, you're working for other companies, or you're just getting started in your hardscape career, learning how to operate equipment is one of the most important things you can do. So if you're in, the, in an area where you need to get a license for it, I suggest you do some studying, see what you got to do to get the license, and then um, try to get some machine time because it really makes you valuable and it really helps you get through projects much quicker and more efficiently. But you see here as I'm excavating, once I get to my uh, correct height, 
I'm just tamping the subsoil with my bucket. And um, I did want to address some questions. I usually get asked how I know, um, how I get to my grades and everything. I've just been doing this for a very long time. I know when I get past that 8 to 10 inch mark, and as long as it's good subsoil, you really don't have to be too precise with your depth. Uh, you just want to make sure you get that nice slope away from the structure, and um, you're below that 8 to 10 inches, and you, you tamp that subsoil with your bucket. And then afterwards, you do like what I showed you earlier. You spread that thin layer of three-quarter inch stone over that subsoil that you tamp down with your bucket. And then you're going to compact that with your plate compactor. And it's going to push those stones into your subsoil. And that's going to open up your subsoil so that it accepts water. And any moisture that gets under your patio or your walkway, whatever, whatever it is you're building, it'll be able to permeate and drain into your subsoils. That's what you want. A, nice, a really hard packed, dense grade gravel base prevents water flow or restricts water flow. That's why this open grade base method is so superior in my opinion. And this geotextile soil separation fabric is permeable. It's a woven plastic and it allows water to travel through while stabilizing your, your base stone preventing shifting and moving in the future. Another day, another dollar, Benny. Another dollar, another day. All right, day number two here at this project. We're back, we got a lot more excavation done. Came with another few loads of stone. We got our bedding stone over there. One more load of asphalt. Over here. We are having the materials delivered today too. The pavers, the wall block, um, minus a few things. We won't get the border pavers, but uh, we're gonna have the bulk of the material here today. Back up just to here. All right, I get a lot of questions on pricing and stuff. I think I'm gonna try to start throwing that uh, that content in with these jobs here, just kind of what I pay for materials and stuff like that. I might go, might not go into detail much on all the like the total estimated job, but um, I guess the start is one load of this three-quarter inch crushed stone that I usually work with. Just a nice clean three-quarter inch crushed stone. Uh, I can get about three yards in this dump trailer and be safe with weight and the three yards is going to run you anywhere from eighty dollars to about a hundred and ten dollars for three yards so it's between twenty five and like thirty five dollars a yard if you're going straight to a uh, an aggregate facility you can usually get this stuff for a lot cheaper because uh, what happens is actually the material providers will buy it from these aggregate dealers and then up up charge it and sell it to people like us but if you go directly to the source is when you're going to find it down in the the uh, low twenty dollar high teen range per yard but my common price is about twenty five to thirty five dollars per per cubic yard all right now that that's done we're going to get them set up and put into position so we can pick up the rest of this asphalt that'll be load number three of the asphalt again three yards per load so that's going to be uh, nine yards total and around here that can really vary you can get down to paying about 15 to 20 dollars per yard to dump it and upwards to 50 to 60 dollars a yard to dump it so yeah in this business the prices can uh, vary and fluctuate big time depending on you know where you're getting your stuff or where you're dumping your stuff uh, who you know there's some companies out there that have connections where they can get rid of soil really cheap or get rid of concrete and asphalt really cheap. So it just really depends on your own circumstances. All right, sent Ben off with the full load. We got a little bit left over, um, but we're going to have a lot of cuts from the patio and the wall and uh, stuff like that. 
So we're gonna leave that here till the end of the job and we'll clean it all up in one load. The other thing that we are doing here that I haven't mentioned, I don't think, is we're putting in a French drain along the entire front of the house for any water that may come in because this, it's a funny angle, but it's actually kind of sloped towards the house. So we're gonna put a little French drain in along the edge for any of the surface water on the patio to go down into and it's going to slope all the way over here come out and just kind of spit off out into the open here where the grade is is lower so the next thing is going to be for me to just kind of dig out a channel about uh 18 inches or so past the uh the footing of the foundation pull all that into a pile and we're going to have one more load of fill coming out of here today Right there is perfect, yep. Awesome. There it is, everything's techo block here. It always pays to get a delivery when you have that much materials. It's just not worth getting it yourself. They can unload and, and load so much quicker than you can. Got our drain all installed. We're pitching nicely to the corner here. And everything in front of the house will be open stone, open grade stone for the water to uh, enter into the trench, down the pipe and drain. And right here, Benny did this the other day off camera, but there's actually a, a 90 degree uh, coupler and that turns into a solid pipe. Solid pipe is buried through this trench and it spits out over here. Significant grade change right there. So we got plenty of slope and any water that may build up underneath the patio or that comes off of the roof of the house will hit that trench, hit that drain and uh, flow all the way down over here to the side yard and the water will be diverted away from the front of the house hey bud hey man awesome what's up trav we are ready to build
we are done with our excavation and backfill and we're done with this video so if you're interested in seeing how this job comes together make sure you hit that like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and the next video is going to be us starting these uh, pillars and the wall the sitting wall that's what most of those pallets are hey ben say goodbye to your fans hey goodbye guys peace